Hello folks, welcome to Design Engineer's Card. Consider subscribing this channel if you are a product designer or a design engineer. This channel focusing more on content related to the product design and development. Definitely that will be helpful to enhance your career. Engineering Materials Engineering materials refers to the group of materials that are used in construction of man-made structures and components. The primary function of an engineering material is to withstand applied loading without breaking and without exhibiting excessive deflection. The major classification of engineering materials include metals, polymers, ceramics and composites. This chart shows the subcategories of metals and polymers and also examples of ceramics and composites. Metals are subdivided into ferrous and non-ferrous metals and also the ferrous and non-ferrous as the pure metal form and alloy form. Polymers are subdivided into three different categories as thermoplastics, thermoset plastics and elastomers. And another two categories are ceramics and composites. Metals Metals are the most commonly used class of engineering material. Metal alloys are especially common and are formed by combining a metal with another metal or another non-metallic materials. The combination usually occurs by melting, mixing and cooling process. Alloying of the material is done to improve the properties of the base material. Metals are further classified into ferrous metal and non-ferrous metal. Ferrous metals are those which contain iron as their main constituent or base metal. Ferrous metals having great castability, high compressive strength, good wear resistance, low melting point and also it's available relatively cheap. Ferrous metal again available in pure metal form or alloy form. The pure form of ferrous metal is iron. Alloys Alloys can be divided into two different categories, ferrous alloys and non-ferrous alloys. Ferrous alloys have iron as the base element. Ferrous alloys are the most common metal alloys in use due to the abundance of the iron and ease of production and high versatility of the material. The biggest disadvantage of many ferrous alloys is low corrosion resistance. Carbon is an important alloying element in all the ferrous alloys. In general, high level of carbon increases strength and hardness and decreases ductility and weldability. Examples of ferrous alloys are carbon steel, low alloy steel, tool steel, stainless steel, cast iron, etc. Alloy steels are also made in multiple forms such as chromium, nickel, molybdenum, vanadium, manganese, etc. The use of material varies based on the application. Non-ferrous alloys Non-ferrous alloys are combination of other pure metals other than iron. Let us see some examples. Aluminium alloys. The pure aluminium is soft and weak but it can be alloyed to increase the strength. Pure aluminium has good corrosion resistance due to the oxide coating that forms over the metal and prevents oxidation. The table represents the mechanical properties of several common aluminium alloys. Next, nickel alloys. Nickel alloys have high temperature and corrosion resistance. The table shows the mechanical properties of several common nickel alloys. Copper alloys. Copper alloys are generally characterized as electrically conductive, good corrosion resistance and relatively easy to form and cast. The table shows mechanical properties of several common copper alloys. Titanium alloys Titanium alloys are light, strong and have high corrosion resistance. Their density is much lower than the steel and the strength to weight ratio is excellent. For this reason, titanium alloys are fairly used in aerospace industry. The table shows mechanical properties of several common titanium alloys. Non-ferrous metals We have already seen the non-ferrous metal alloys which doesn't contain iron. Non-ferrous metals are softer and therefore more malleable. 
properties of non ferrous metals are high corrosion resistance easy to fabricate great thermal conductivity great electrical conductivity low density colorful and non magnetic let us see some of the pure non ferrous metals all pure metals are non ferrous elements except iron important non ferrous metals include copper aluminum lead zinc tin silver mercury and gold next polymers polymers are materials that consist of molecules formed by long chain of repeating units they may be natural or synthetic many useful engineering materials are polymers such as plastics rubbers fibers adhesives and coatings polymers are classified as thermoplastic polymers thermosetting polymers and elastomers the classification of thermoplastic and thermosetty is based on their response to heat if heat is applied to a thermoplastic it will soften and melt once it is cooled it will return to the solid form thermoplastic do not experience any chemical change through repeated heating and cooling process therefore they are well suited for injection molding common examples of thermoplastic include polyethylene polypropylene polyvinyl chloride polystyrene acrylic nylon teflon etc at some temperature these materials become soft and flexible and solidify when it's cooled next thermoset polymers thermosets are typically heated during the initial processing after which they become permanently hard thermoset will not melt upon reheating however if the applied heat becomes extreme the thermoset will degrade due to the breaking of the molecular bonds thermosets typically have greater hardness and strength than thermoplastics they also typically have better dimensional stability than thermoplastics means that they are better at maintaining their dimensional stability when subjected to temperature and moisture changes examples of thermosetting polymers are epoxy resin bakelite vinyl ester resin cyanate ester polyester resin polyurethane silicon resin fiberglass etc another category of polymer is elastomers elastomers are high elastic polymers with mechanical properties similar to rubber elastomers are commonly used for seals adhesives hoses belt and other flexible parts the strength and stiffness of the rubber can be increased through a process called vulcanization which involves adding sulfur and subjecting the material to high temperature and pressure this process causes cross links to form between the polymer chains examples of elastomers are natural rubber polybutadiene polysafrin silicon neoprene etc next engineering material category is ceramics Ceramics are solid compound that may consist of metallic or non-metallic elements. The primary classification of ceramics include glasses, cements, clay products, refractories and abrasives. Ceramics generally have excellent corrosion and wear resistance, high melting temperature, high stiffness and low electrical and thermal conductivity. Ceramics are also very brittle materials. Examples of ceramic materials are glass, cement, clay, refractories and abrasives. Refractory ceramics can withstand high temperatures and extreme environmental conditions. They can also provide thermal insulation. Brick is the most common refractory ceramic. Abrasive ceramics are hard materials that are used to cut or grind softer materials. The typical properties of abrasive materials include high hardness wear resistance and temperature resistance next composites a composite material is a material in which one or more mutually insoluble materials are mixed or bonded together the primary classes of composites are particulate composites fibrous composites and laminated composites particulate composites are created by adding particles of one material to the other The particles will typically account for less than 15% of the total material volume. Concrete is an example of particulate material. 
Fibrous composite is a material in which fibers of one material are embedded within the other. The fibers carry most of the stresses acting on the material. The fibers can be short or randomly oriented or it can be long and continuous. Carbon fibers and fiberglass are most common reinforcement in thermoplastic composites. Laminated composites are created by combining layers of composite material. The layers will typically differ in the orientation of the fibers or they will differ in the material itself. Sandwich materials are common in which lightweight material will be placed in between the layers of a strong and stiff material. Laminated composite materials are used extensively in aerospace and other applications. Material selection is a step in the process of designing any physical object. Because of that, knowledge of material is very crucial in order to select the right material for the right application. Hope this video is helpful. Please share your comments.